Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm gonna be your tour guide today as I take you through Lumion 9. I wanna show you how to get around in the program, but I also want you to understand what Lumion can do for your design practice. Forget what you know about rendering. Lumion is different. Lumion is the fastest and easiest rendering program, and it creates stunning results. Lumion's lightning fast render speeds and seamless workflow make unreasonable deadlines attainable. Lumion's intuitive interface paired with a massive object library and impressive styles means you can visualize it yourself. No need to outsource anymore. Here's the big picture in three steps. First, import your 3D design from just about any modeling program. Second, craft a living environment by adding objects, materials, context, and weather. And third, render stills, animations, virtual tours, and virtual reality. Beautiful renders are now within your reach. Let me show you. Once you've installed Lumion and clicked to start it up, a benchmark process will check the speed of your computer. The results are shown by this bar at the bottom. Don't ignore the recommended specs and don't skimp on hardware. You will need a good graphics card to get the most out of Lumion. Click on the bar to see more detailed results. This computer has an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti card. All the benchmark bars are green, which means this setup is gonna rip. You can rerun the benchmark if you install new hardware, but for now, we're all set. The news and learning section on the start screen links out to helpful blogs, events, and tutorials. These items update often, so be sure to check them out every time you start Lumion. The first tab at the top is the standard start page with six environments you can use to begin building your scene. The second tab has nine pre-made examples, fully textured, lit, and ready to render. These are great for exploring more advanced techniques and learning how the pros do it. On the third tab, you can load a scene you have previously made in Lumion. Click on the language button at the top to choose a different default language. My computer is set to English, but you can choose from many different languages without installing a different version of Lumion. Let's start with a plain, empty scene. Click here to begin. Build mode is where you'll spend most of your time working in Lumion, crafting your scene. And there's two main areas of the user interface that you should know about. Let me show you. At the bottom right, you can access the Photo, Movie, and 360 Panorama Studios. This is where you will create stills, animations, virtual tours, and virtual reality. Click the disk icon to get back to the start screen to manage your files. When you're finished, just click on the Build Mode button to jump back to the scene you were working on. Click the gear icon to access Lumion settings. I like to keep my settings maxed out because I know my computer can handle it. If you're falling short on the benchmarks or have a large Lumion scene, you might consider backing down these settings to increase computer performance. Hovering over the question mark button overlays the screen with some helpful tips. If you're ever lost, look here for some help in build mode and even in the photo, movie, and 360 panorama studios. In build mode, there are four additional tabs at the bottom left, weather, landscape, materials, and objects. On the objects tab, there are several different category tabs to access the expansive Lumion object library. But right now, we need to import a model that we created outside of Lumion. This will be the foundation of our scene. I'm going to import a SketchUp file, but the truth is that just about any 3D modeling program will produce a file that can be used in Lumion. There are several options for direct imports and add-ons for Revit and Rhino that create clean exports for use in Lumion. To navigate in Lumion, use the WASD keys to move forwards, left, back, or right. Q and E move the camera up and down. Hold down the right click and move your mouse to look around. A good combination which gets you anywhere is to hold down the W key and the right mouse button at the same time, then move the mouse to steer. These icons on the lower menu allow you to move, resize, and rotate any object. To be more precise, use the type in field to position the model's origin to zero 125, 0 in Lumion. This house overlooks Los Angeles, so it should sit a little higher than the ground plane in Lumion. Now select the Materials tab on the left. Hovering your mouse above any material highlights it. If you click on a material, you will see the Lumion material library appear. There are four main categories of materials, Nature, Indoor, Outdoor, and Custom. Each has several subtabs. You can either swap a Lumion material with the imported material, or you can add Lumion properties to the imported material. Glass, grass, and water are good candidates to be swapped out and replaced by the animated, 
optimized, realistic Lumion materials. Lumion has trademarked pure glass presets. You can change the specific properties of any glass style that you select. Adjust the sliders to get the look you want. I like a little relief in my glass to take the computer edge off. Lumion water has always been absolutely stunning. There are lots of presets, all of which are completely configurable. The 3D grass in Lumion 9 has made a quantum leap. There are plenty of configurable presets, and now you can have as many variations as you like in the same scene. If you are good with texturing in your modeling program, it is easy to add Lumion properties to the imported materials. Make it a standard material and adjust the gloss, reflectivity, and relief. There are several other tabs to adjust position, orientation, transparency, settings, weathering, and foliage. With these settings, it's easy to achieve an authentic look. Keep in mind that in build mode, some things will look a little different than the final rendered version. For example, transparent trees, lighting, grass, and some material details will look okay while editing, but spectacular once rendered. This compromise between edit quality and output quality will keep you moving fast. All right, let's take a look at the landscape tab. The third tab from the left opens the landscape functions, and the bottom menu now offers different options. Let's switch on the grass. Using the sliders, you can adjust the size, height, and wildness. The 3D grass materials can be pretty heavy. This type of grass is not, so it's better for larger fields. You can change the overall style of the landscape here. Notice that the steep terrain is automatically rendered as cliffs. Very cool. Use the height tools to modify the terrain. You can raise, lower, flatten, jitter, and smooth the Lumion terrain to better receive your imported design model. You can paint the terrain like this. Get the look you want by adjusting the pattern, brush size, and speed. You can add an ocean with just one click. Adjust several properties using the sliders to create the right look. Create perfect context for an urban environment using the OpenStreetMap import. This feature has been drastically improved in Lumion 9. The results are faster, more accurate, and more detailed than before. The button on the far right gets us weather options. It's easy to change the sun direction and height by using the dials. You can select from several cloud types and easily control the amount of clouds using the slider. The button on the left gets us back to the object tab so we can now start to detail our scene. Click on the place tool, then select a collection to place from. Notice that the library is now available right here in build mode so you can keep your eyes on your design. Notice the size of this collection. Each of the tabs has several sub tabs. Imagine what it would cost to buy all of these objects individually. Click the Nature Objects category. Now, click on an object thumbnail. Position your cursor to see the object rendered right next to your design. To explore different choices, just click on another object thumbnail. Use keyboard shortcuts to rotate and scale to get it just right before placing. You can sort through any collection with a search. Let's try Palm. Click on a tree, then click in Build Mode to place it. All of these landscape objects are pre-animated, truly optimized for Lumion. They even respond to weather. You can see it gently blowing in the breeze. You can get your planting plan modeled really fast using the mass placement function. Click to start the line, then hold Control to continue to add points. This menu pops up for you to adjust spacing, rotation, number, and offsets. You can add other objects to the mass placement path and they will be mixed in. The Select, Rotate, Scale, and Delete tools give you full control of the objects in your scene. Edit all categories at the same time, or choose a specific category to isolate while editing. You can always edit an object's properties by clicking on it with the Select tool. Adjust the transparency of a tree to help your design show through. If you move the mouse to the top of the screen, layers will appear. It's good practice to assign different object types to different layers. Looks pretty good. I think we're ready to take some photos. The camera icon on the right gets us to the photo studio. This is where you can take snapshots of the scene you've built. The interface changes a bit, but you'll still move around your scene with the same navigation controls you used in build mode. You can save the camera locations by clicking the store camera button above the camera slots. Clicking on any stored camera takes you back to that spot in your scene. The numbers below get you access to each photo set. There is room for 100 cameras. Styles are truly the easy button in Lumion. Click on a style to get stunning results with very little effort. There are realistic 
and sketchy styles. Here are renders of this project using only styles. I like to use a sketchy style early in the design process. This way it doesn't feel like I've worked everything out just yet. It leaves a little bit to the client's imagination. It can also make an incomplete model look a little more intentional. The FX button at the top is the door to Lumion's effects. Add several effects to build your own custom style. There are several different effect categories, like light and shadow, camera, scene and animation, weather and climate, sketch, colors, and various. Let's start with the new Real Skies effect. There are 39 Real Skies with pre-configured skylight settings. It takes just a single click to give your design a clear blue morning, a stormy afternoon, or an unforgettable sunset. The sun is casting pretty harsh shadows in the scene. Add the shadows effect to turn on soft shadows and fine detail shadows. Much better. We'll add another world effect, reflections. This is a very useful effect for achieving more realism. Lumion invented speed ray reflections, and switching it on improves reflections without much effect on computer performance. The pencil allows you to add reflection planes to specific surfaces. These are perfect reflections, but they have a bigger effect on computer performance. I've just skipped forward, having added a number of effects to the still image. You can save your unique stack of effects to a file for later use. Load the effects on each camera to save yourself some clicks. Render the current shot or photo set. Check out these final renderings. Each one took less than a minute. Absolutely amazing. Switch to the movie studio by clicking on the icon on the lower right. This is where you become a director. Your job is to tell the story of your design. Let's record a camera path. Like before, you move around your scene clicking the camera icon to store camera locations. The difference now is that Lumion fills in the camera path between the locations to make a movie clip. You can change the speed of the clip with these arrows. Slower is always better. Let's create another clip by selecting an empty slot. Now we've got two clips. You can drag and drop to change the clip order. You can play the clips back individually or all together by clicking here. You'll see a vertical line separating the clips when you play them back all together. Effect stacks work in all of the studios, so let's take a shortcut and load our effect stack that we created for a daytime render. The new precipitation effect completely sets the mood with atmospheric rain and snow. This interior shot takes on a cozy mood with the rain falling outside, but it would be great if we could just get this weather to clear up. Keyframes allow you to animate effects. Click on the wave symbol next to the effect slider. A keyframe will be added to the playback bar. Scrub through the clip to a different point. Then, click the wave symbol again to add another keyframe. Now it's pool weather. Now, let's render the whole movie by clicking on the green button at the bottom right. Keep in mind, there's a trade-off between quality and render time. 5 stars, 30 frames per second at Ultra HD 4K is a very high quality output. You'll be prompted for a file name and location. Render times depend on the chosen quality level, graphics card, and the length and complexity of your movie. This is a brief glimpse of the rendered output. Pretty spectacular. Now try this. Add the 3D movie effect to your animation. Render it again and check it out in the Oculus Go. This is unbelievable. It's like sitting in a theater watching a 3D movie. The Oculus Go serves up a quick and practical immersive experience anywhere anytime without having a complicated VR setup. This headset is easy and dependable, perfect for client presentations. Let me show you some more Lumion VR possibilities in the 360 Panorama Studio. The interface changes a bit, but the idea is the same. Move around your scene and select locations by clicking on the store camera button. Each location will eventually be rendered as a 360 panorama and uploaded to my Lumion for sharing and viewing online or for use in a virtual reality headset. We now have six locations. We'll load the effect stack that we created earlier to each of the positions. Let's first render as a virtual reality output, suitable for all of the popular headsets. There's a big difference in the time it takes to render draft quality versus production quality. So unless it's really necessary, select draft quality. View these in your VR headset for a mind-blowing 3D experience. You can also render the panoramas to MyLumion. This will send an email with a unique link to your online render. This link can then be forwarded to anyone you like so they can navigate around your latest design right away on a phone, tablet, or computer. 
it's rendering to MyLumion now. Fast forward, we can now view the renders on the MyLumion website. You can jump between viewpoints by enabling these eye symbols, or you can jump between them in order using the arrows at the bottom left. Clicking on the Settings button in the Panorama Studio takes you to your online management environment. This allows you to view and manage all of your MyLumion projects. The most powerful feature in Lumion is its seamless workflow. You can continue to make changes throughout the entire design process and easily reload it back into Lumion. Thanks for sticking with me through this quick tour. I hope you picked up a few tips on how to get the most out of Lumion and now fully understand the workflow. Be sure to check out the other in-depth, step-by-step tutorials to master those advanced techniques. Now don't be shy, get in there, click some buttons, and make some beautiful renders. You can do it. I'll see you in the next tutorial.